Hey guys, it's X and Shadow. Welcome back to another fun-fueled episode of Pokemon Sapphire. Yes, I am working on these things again, I know. It's like three months in between each update, but whatever. Okay, so after beating the sixth gym, who is run by... Who's its face? Uh, we have gotten our sixth badge, and so now, as I promised, we are going and fighting this double battle. And for experience purposes, I'm putting Donut Man and Dunderhead up front, because I want Dunderhead to evolve, and I also want Donut Man to be come closer, because he's really close to evolving, which would be good. So yes, interviewer Gabby and Ty. Again. Now I know why paparazzi is so annoying. <laughs> I'm not buying another issue of National Enquirer, Nash National Enquirer as long as I live. But yeah, they still have the same Pokemon, only now they're Magneton and Loudred as opposed to Whismur and Magnemite. Really, you should not have problems with these guys. Any ground-type move will own Magneton, and eh, that's why I'm using Dig here, and Loudred is just not an outstanding Pokemon, so you should be fine either way. The thing about Loudred is that, um, well, it's kind of trying to be a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none, but in Pokemon, one of the whole concept is that each Pokemon is a master of its own trade. Like, you've got a tank because it's a tank, or you've got a sweeper because it's a sweeper. Having mixed roles is good, obviously, but if you try to beat too many things at once, then you're not going to do very well. That's why I'm not a big fan of the Nido King, or the Nido Queen. They're good Pokemon in and of themselves, but they're not outstanding, and they need to be outstanding in some way in order to be effective. If that makes any sort of sense. But yeah, Loudred is gonna die in approximately 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, you're dead. I'm so good at counting. And yeah, another stupid, meaningless, non existent double battle beat. Hooray! So, of course, for beating interviewer Gabby and Ty again, we are asked again if we want to do another interview. Again. Thankfully, however, I say no, and we just go along our merry way. And so, yes, now that the Kecleon is out of the way, because Steven got him out of the way for us, uh, we can get through this area without much trouble. And, of course, it's raining, so you know what that means. You just bring out your water types and leave your fire types at home. You can't get through this entire area without fighting any trainers if you're just um, careful enough. One thing I would recommend, whenever you're near a trainer, do not run. That will only attract their attention and bring them to look at you. So, uh, I'd recommend leaving your bike off until you get to an area where you're sure there's no uh, trainers around. Um, yes, uh, I'd rec since there aren't really any trainers that, you, that, won't, that will blindside you in this area, uh, the area you see right now, of course. I would recommend just getting your bike because it'll A, keep you out of the grass so that you don't um, accidentally run into a wild Pokemon, and B, it's just faster that way. Over here is Nugget. Uh, you can sell that for lots of money, so I recommend picking it up. It's only like three seconds out of the way, too, so don't worry about it. And yeah, thankfully the rain doesn't last that long, though, so if you rely on a fire type, like if you chose Torchic, you're, you'll be fine. And of course, you can escape pretty much every battle in this area as well, so you don't have to worry about um, fighting trainers if you don't want to. What I would recommend is getting to a Pokemon Center and then going back and fighting all the trainers, just because it's more convenient that way. But yes, you should have a Pokemon that knows Surf by now, so you should take this um, opportunity to get this item over here, because really, what other chance are you going to get to find it? It's a full heal, and full heals are generally very useful. Uh, they're cheap in the they're cheap in the stores too. I think only like six hundred dollars. But if you can find one that's free, I mean, why not take it? If I mean, if you get like burned or frozen, you're gonna need something to heal it, and you generally don't have freeze or burn heal on you. And yes, of course, you can skip this person too. But I was just dumb. But in that battle, <gasps> Dunderhead is evolving. Dun 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 dun. Okay, I'll stop singing. Um. But yes, uh, if you didn't know this already, Tentacruel evolves into, drumroll please, Tentacruel, as if you couldn't figure it out. Now, Tentacruel is a very good special wall. It can eat up special attacks like nothing, and I'm not sure if by level up or by breeding, it can also learn um, Mirror Coat. 
Uh, mirror coat is kind of like counter for uh, special moves, and it's very useful. Oh no, there are Team Aqua guys. We should go chase after them, right? 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 We should go chase after the bad guys that we know are going to... Oh, no wait, no we're not. <laughs> so, yeah, um, if you keep on going this way, you'll head towards Lily Cove City, which is the nearest Pokemon Center. I'd recommend just going there if you need to get some healing up. And also, it's um, I just wanted to show this just so you know how to get to Liliko City, because we're going to just start the next episode in this city, hint, hint. But yes, jump cut back to the pier. Um, you're going to need to know a Pokemon that uses Surf. If you don't have any water types, I would recommend catching a Zigzagoon or a Linoon, because those are some of the best HM slaves you can have in the game. And they can also learn Surf for some reason. But okay, welcome to Mount Pyre. Uh, this is your uh, lavender tower of the game, so to speak. You don't actually have to go up here, but there are a few items up here that I'd like to show off. But yeah, this is a place where you can catch Shuppets and Duskulls. Um, you're gonna want to go in here, because there are a few good goodies in this area. And But it's just sort of a shameless rehash of the lavender tower to an extent. I mean, you don't have... Uh, people going, oh, zombies, oh, I'm being kind of obnoxious, but yeah, hey, look on the bright side, at least they didn't turn Mount Pyre into a radio tower, but yes, it is possible to go through this room without fighting anyone, but it's just a little bit tricky when you don't know how to do it, it just requires some patience. Metal Gear, yes, um, if you drop down into those holes, you'll go down a floor, and then you'll, and then you can get some of the items that are hidden behind tombstones. And I just have to say that this is some of the most haphazard tombstone arrangement that I've ever seen ever. Uh, like, look at this. What if somebody wanted to see the grave of their dear old, uh, I don't know, uh, Linoon, and it's like hidden behind a bajillion other ones? They'd have to go up a few floors and then drop down. It's like, it seems incredibly impractical and kind of disrespectful, in a way. But it's a video game, of course. So, if you go all the way up here, you get one TM-30. And of course, they still don't tell you what TM you get when you pick it up. So, TM-30 is Shadow Ball. Um, Shadow Ball is a very, very useful move. However, in this generation, it's a physical attacking move, as opposed to a special, which it would be in Gen 4. I actually like it better as a physical move, because one, it does more to psychic types who have notoriously bad defense in general, and two, it also makes it less abusable, because once Shadow Ball became a special move, it, w it became one of the most widely used moves in the game, as opposed to something that you could just whip out to defeat a psychic, and that's about it. Uh, sea Incense. If you give that to some Pokemon, it'll breed some other Pokemon. I think that's how you get Azurmeral, or, as, I don't know, it's either Wanat or Azurl you get with that. But now that you're on the bottom floor, you actually have to go outside. That's where you need to go, and of course my Repel's effect wore off. But, okay, now we're at the outside of Mount Pyre. You'll still run into a bunch of Shuppets and Duskulls here, but... And that's about it. However, uh, there is, I think, like a 1% chance, or at least a very small chance, that you'll also run into a Chimeco in this area, making it one of the rarest Pokemon in the game. So I'd recommend looking for that if you need to uh, find it, uh, it for Pokedex reasons. I think we got Steel Wing um, there. I didn't actually see. But yes, Shadow Ball is not going to be used on my team, unfortunately, because the only person who can learn it is Solaris, who does not have a good sp a physical attack stat. So now it's getting all foggy and mysterious, and I go back to pick up this item too, which is a Max Potion! Obviously, if you read the title, you'll be able to figure out that Max Potions make your HP go up to max, which is very helpful in a lot of situations. I'd recommend saving that for Endgame, though. And, uh, I'm doing something. Oh yes, I'm using Super Potion on my Donut Man, because I know we're going to be going into a fight soon. Uh, so we go up here, and... <gasps> Team Aqua. This doesn't remind me of Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow at all, no. I'll show you exactly how scary Team Aqua could be. <laughs> how scary could Team Aqua be? I mean, you guys are really pathetic. And ah, Zubat! Get it away, get it away, get it away! 
yes, this guy has a Zubat, and those are scary in and of itself, so I guess he wasn't completely lying. Hey, I never said Team Aqua were liars, I just said that they were full of crap. And yes, Zubats are just as pathetic as they always are, except this one knows frickin' Confuse Ray. Have we gone over Confusion yet? Probably, but it's... I'll just to reiterate, it's incredibly annoying. But, hold on, it's... One of my favorite moves to use, but not to be on the receiving end of. Obviously, I don't think you'd want to be on the receiving end of any move. But yes, um, thankfully I snapped out of confusion relatively quickly, and the Zubat is dead. But yeah, uh, well, that was a little bit frightening, but I mean, it's not like he's got anything else that's completely terrifying. I mean, it's not like I'll be afraid of anything else he sends out, and I even sent out Solaris, because it's probably more apt to deal with whatever he has than anything else. So anyway, I'm prepared for- OH MY GOD, ANOTHER ONE! Ah! <laughs> yeah, Zubats. I hate Zubats, and that's why I just decided to use Psychic, and I'm not going to even pretend to be afraid of the next one. He sends out another fucking Zubat. Yep, as you can see, Team Aqua Grunt is about to send out Zubat. So, yeah. Ah. Uh, if I can go on a tangent a little bit, uh, Black and White's uh, Zubat clone is named Moobat. Moobat. So is your Geodude clone going to be called Shmeodude too? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it's just kind of a stupid name. So, yeah. One Team Aqua Grunt down, two to go. Oh no, a Team Aqua Grunt. I'm so scared. It's not like it's just going to have the same Pokemon we've run into for five bajillion times in a row. <sighs> team Aqua Grunt would like to battle. Yeah, that's the thing. Team, uh, team whatever Grunts generally suck. If they were a bit more of a threat, then sure, but they almost always suck. They're usually weaker than all the other normal trainers, and they have a smaller variety of Pokemon to use. I know I've been over all of this before, but I've got to reiterate that these guys are using Poochianas that could be Mighty Anas. They're using Carvanas that I'm pretty sure could be Sharpedos at this point. Not completely. And they're using Zubats that I think could be evolved into Golbats by now. I mean, do you expect us to take you seriously like this? Granted, Carvan isn't actually a good Pokemon, but it's a water type, which are really easy to deal with because grass and electric types are all over the place. I mean, sure, the dark type is a um, need extra, but yeah. So yeah, another team awkward d grunt down. Another one bites the dust, and another one gone, and another one gone, another one bites the dust. So, now we're fighting the last grunt in this video, thank god. <sighs> Has anybody else ever noticed that their logo looks kind of like an unknown, actually? Huh, I wonder if it's supposed to be the unknown for A. Huh. Yeah, you just to think about these things whenever you're just watching the same sort of thing all over again. I mean, come on, we're watching another Carvana. The same exact Carvana that the last guy had. Woo. So, yes, he uses Crunch. Eh, at least that's relatively different. And he got a critical hit on me, too, which was interesting, I guess. So, yes. The Chainsaw to Death with Leaves. Woo. So, now that the... Ru oh, yeah. Um, I almost got close to dying at this point, which was a little bit frightening, but... Uh, nothing that I couldn't handle. Uh, do I change Pokemon? Yes, I changed to Solaris, because remember, Solaris is Thunderbolt. If I were to use Psychic on this guy, though, it wouldn't work, but who cares, because I'm faster than it anyway. <laughs> ah, Solaris, you're awesome, even though you're incredibly infeminized in this video. Excuse me. So, yes, finally we're done with stupid Team Aqua Grunts. Will we have to fight more of them? Yeah, probably. But it's not really that big of a deal, honestly. They're a lot more fun to go through than they are to commentate over. So, yes, it's Archie. Oh no. Ah, uh, Archie. He's impeded our plans. So instead of trying to, like, tie us down or kidnap us or something so that we don't bother him and telling us where he's going to go next, he just runs away. Huh. So he took the red orb. So, we are getting the blue orb. Hooray. This will become incredibly plot important later on. 
but yeah, whatever. Well, that's about it. I'll see you guys next time, everybody.